That's so brilliant. This video is sponsored by Case Filters. I often hear landscape photographers saying it would not be possible to use a fisher lens for landscape, at least not when it comes down for getting really strong photographs. Now, in my experience, it is possible and that can even lead to really powerful images. It is just difficult maybe to get in when you don't know where to start. So in this video, I will explain the difference between a normal lens and a fisher lens and I will show you some fisheye techniques so that you can get stronger photographs. Hi my friends, very nice to see you. It was for longer than a year or so that I had a fisher lens in my bag all the time whenever I went out for landscape photography. I simply thought whenever I would come into a situation, you know, where using a fisher lens would be an advantage, I could just use it to get a better photo. But the reality was that I never came in a situation like that. And that for a reason. Because a fisher lens simply doesn't work like a normal lens. A normal lens is designed to create a kind of copy of reality if you want. It is just the camera position that allows us to arrange all the elements in a way that our image conveys what we want it to convey. So whenever we use our camera with a normal lens, we see more or less how reality looks. But as soon as we put a fisher lens onto our camera, everything looks completely different to reality. Verticals get diagonals in some part of the image, the same verticals change the direction in another part of the frame, and as soon as we change our camera angle just a little bit, the angle of the lines change again. It seems to be impossible to estimate how a composition will look through a fisher lens. So my tip number one is don't have your fisher lens always in your bag just for the case. You could end up never to use it because it's really difficult to estimate how a scene would look through a fisher lens. It's much easier instead to go out for a dedicated session of fisher photography without looking for other compositions. I often hear photographers saying that they don't like that fisheye look. Now, a big advantage in landscape photography is that there are lots of lines out in nature that are unpredictable. This image here, for instance, was taken with a fisheye lens, so it doesn't look after that, right? There are different techniques of how to use a fisheye lens. But before I will tell you that, let's have a look what's the difference between a normal lens and a fisher lens. Well, with a normal lens, we just have to deal with the three dimensions of our real world of reality. And things are quite simple here, I have to say. In most of the cases, we work on compositions inside a one-point perspective. And this means we have a couple of vanishing lines which start at several origins three for instance, and then they converge at one vanishing point. There are exceptions of course, there could be more vanishing points, but that's not where I went here. One vanishing point, several origins. That is an area like architecture we are used to in photography. Well, the problem with a fisher lens uh, is now that it changes our aerial architecture completely. Instead of just one, we have four vanishing points, which are at the corners of our frame. And we have just one origin. The vanishing lines move from the origin towards the vanishing points. Now, for landscape photography, inside our normal aerial architecture, we have learned that it is a good idea to use a foreground close to the origin and to place prominent elements on our vanishing lines back to the vanishing point. That's a very common architecture we are used to in landscape photography. I use that all the time. And the thing is, that works also with the fisher lens. The only difference is that the origin and the vanishing points are in different positions in our frame. So we have to change our thinking when we want to build up a composition with the fisher lens. 
Basically, there are multiple ways of yeah, how to use a fisher lens, but especially for landscape photography, I see two different techniques that work best for me. First things first, so let's start with the more obvious one. But I would say let me show that out in the field. The easiest way of getting a photograph with a fish eye lens, especially in woodland, is to go for a big center object. And what I did is, I picked out this leaf here as our subject, and I will put it into my center. This means the distortion in the center of the fish eye lens isn't all too much, so it will look like it is here. Just the outer side, so this, 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 this curve of this tree will go, uh, get a little bit more. Also this tree here at the right hand side will be curved a little bit more, and we get this nice natural framing. So I would say, let's go for that. So for this first technique, we simply put the origin point close to the center of our frame by pointing straight towards the subject. And this ends up that all the surrounding builds a nice kind of framing around our subject. A good tip here is to shoot wide open so that we get the subject a little bit better isolated from the backdrop. I mean, using a fisher lens will anyway lead to a more abstract image due to the distortion, so we don't need a high depth of field here. And what I also did in this image here, I burned out parts of the backdrop to get the high key image, which also leads yeah, to more isolation. And this technique works best with any details out in nature. But what if we want to get an entire landscape into, into our frame without burning out the backdrop? Maybe even without an extreme fisher look. And before I will tell you that, my friends, if you like this video, please give me a thumb up. You know it helps me, it helps the algorithm, and it also helps other photographers out there to find this video back on YouTube. Thank you therefore. Well, shooting details is a quite good idea with the Fisher lens, but there is also a way to photograph an entire landscape scene. Again, when we use a Fisher lens, we have four vanishing points at the corners, and that makes things a bit more complicated. Now, the trick is simply to suppress one of the vanishing points, to simplify the architecture. Sounds complicated, but it is more easy than you might think. The origin in a fisheye composition is usually at the position of the closest element. So when we go close to any element and I just turn my camera around, I change the position of the origin just to, by changing the camera angle. And what we want to do now is we want to move the origin close to one of the vanishing points, or one to the corners actually, because the vanishing points are at the corners. Let's take a photograph by doing that out in the field again. When I came along here, I got attracted by this, and <laughs> it's so cute, it is amazing, by this little baby tree here growing on this tree trunk, and I like this uh, autumn foliage with these browns and oranges, this uh, tree with this curve, I like the entire tree actually, and I thought it's maybe a good idea to get the entire tree into my frame with the baby tree as the star of my show. And with a normal lens, that would not really be possible to be honest, but with the Fisher lens, it is. And I would say, let's make the click. Honestly, I'm not 100% happy with this image, as there are some things in this composition that don't work for me. But it anyway shows the principle quite well. Now, when we look at this image, it looks very similar to a common one-point perspective, doesn't it? But I took it with an 11 mm Fisher lens. Due to shifting the origin from the center, down to a corner, I simply overlapped it with one of the vanishing points. That vanishing point at the left bottom corner got, got suppressed, which makes the composition more simple. And by that, also the opposite vanishing point moved more to the center, which brings everything a bit closer to our common aerial architecture. I mean, the lines are still curved, but not as much as in the first image. These curves even emphasize our tree slightly, which adds to the composition. So on the one hand, using a big center object works well with the Fisher lens, but also suppressing a vanishing point works fantastically. For both architectures, it's a good idea to go really close to a foreground. It helps not only to get a sense of depth into your photos, but also to emphasize the Fisher effect. 
Closer elements look closer, further elements look further away. By the way, a fisher lens can be a fantastic tool for improving our photography. I was out recently for photography just with the goal of improvement and ultimately ended up shooting with the fisher lens, which I got recently. I will share the whole adventure in my next video where I will also tell a bit more about my new lens I got. Maybe we'll get a midweeks video, so get sure to hit the bell icon after you have subscribed that you won't miss it. Yeah, you can get really so creative with the fisher lens and creativity is one of the most important things in photography. I made already a video about creativity, I will link it here for you. And friends, I hope you liked this video. If yes, give me a thumb up. Don't forget to do it next week. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.